watching us live. We have a special guest, but first I'm going to introduce Michael the Knight. Medusa. How you doing, sir? Good, good today. I'm excited to bring in Miguel Chavez, the Parent Teacher Association President at High School of Art and Design uh, in Manhattan. And um, he's created Fanfare. So tell us about that. Well, um, first of all, thanks for having me on. This is really quite a, quite a pleasure to, uh, to be doing this with, with you folks. Um, yes, it is a it's, a, it's our first, it's the, our, our inaugural event. It's happening February 24th, 25th, which is um, Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 6, both days. And it's basically what we've done is we've created our own version of a Comic-Con, the convention. Um, it's a pop culture arts festival. Um, what's unique about it is that we are PTA, we are a high school of, uh, of artistic uh, students uh, in the commercial arts and so the slant is a little bit not just fun and you know having great time but also a bit of the educational push to try to help kids who are on their way to a career to get some advice from other the professionals and so on so what kind of professionals do you expect at the event well we've signed up quite a few uh, we have folks coming from cartooning from animation from illustration, um, uh, from sculpting. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, we have folks. Uh, part of our mission is to try to get some folks who maybe are not in the traditional, you know, line of what you would think in terms of the arts. So I've tried to find folks who are coming from other um, kind of niche markets. So we have some folks that do signage. We have folks who do um, cartography, who do maps. Um, we have some folks who do music, um, but also do uh, art in, in, in within that, uh, like computer art or gaming art. The machinima is going to be um, uh, shown, some workshops uh, like about that. Um, it is very comic book heavy. Um, if you want actual names, uh, we have, uh, well, some of your f future guests here are going to be Stefan Corny, who is this fantastic, fantastic D&D uh, &D uh, dungeon master. He makes his own um, campaigns where he has pieces, and I mean, he's just he's just wild. I, I just checked out his his uh, piece on Netflix. Um, we have uh, Chrissy uh, Felmuth, who's an animator with the uh, Titmouse, and uh, if you look up some of her stuff, hers is a bit more of the uh, risque kind of um, animation, you know, kind of uh, um, dirty jokes and such, but very very funny. Uh, we have some folks coming from School of Visual Arts, uh, Tristan uh, McElwell, uh, some folks who are in traditional comics. Uh, we have some folks coming from Archie Comics, some folks who work on, on Riverdale. Um, I mean, there's just so many. I'd have to pull out my, my sheet of paper and start reading with them out. But, and you um, know what? I was going to ask a question yeah. with that, with the different people that you you have involved. involved. Like, for instance, let's go with Chrissy Feldman. Right. Um, th this is some of her work, some of her character design. Um, is it someone like her? Does she just reach out and say, I want to be involved? Or you said, hey, for whatever reason, you said, hey, Chrissy, you need to be involved with this. Well, this is good because this lets me uh, give proper uh, um, thanks to actually the genesis of all of this is the super parent that we got the, the on board, um, Sari Adams, who is, <laughs> wow. she's a freshman parent, mm -hmm. and it turns out, she came in on board um, right you know at the start of the school year and she said some you know we were kind of shooting ideas for fundraisers she, she said let's I want to do a comic-con and, and I was like that's a lot of work and then it turns out she's been doing it for like a decade or so so she's a veteran and she has a lot of uh, contacts with folks in the industry so when you mention you know Chrissy uh, the, the film methods it's really more that she, Sorry, knew how to reach out to those folks and say, hey, we have this special event coming up and would you be interested? And I think when we spell out the uniqueness of the event, I think these folks kind of um, gravitate right to it. You know, they understand it's uh, a little bit above and beyond than just a uh, regular comic yeah, and, and I definitely got to show this, this picture real quick because this is golden right now. Yes, <laughs> right, um. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stephen Picorni, yeah, that's him. There he is in all his glory. Uh, yeah, he's he's wild. I've actually have never met him, but after I saw that that documentary, I'm like, I know that I know that kind of dude, man. He's driven. That's awesome. Know? Yeah. 
when you say Chrissy has a, te- a decade of experience, it was fun. Sorry, sorry, oh, yeah. Adams. Yeah, sorry, Adams. Yeah, um, the freshman parent. Yeah. She was she like organizing events or was she attending the events? So I can I don't mind to keep uh, crowing about her. She's if I don't know if, how well you know comics, but if you hear the last name Adams, that might mm-hmm. kind of give you a tip off. She's actually the daughter in law of Neil Adams, so uh, she's so she's married to one of Neil's sons, Josh. And so, yeah, she, I think, I think she's been working. I actually don't know. I mean, it's so de- uh, vast her, the, the, like her knowledge, but uh, from what I can gather, she's been helping Neil uh, with their shows. She's been running uh, shows herself um, throughout the country. And I guess she just has had, you know, she, she's a, she's a geek just like us. So I think she's just been knee deep in this stuff for a very long time. So anytime something came up, uh, she would have an answer, like, you know, just right at the tip of her tongue. You know? she, oh, yeah, we can just get this person, or we can just do this, and you could tell that she knew what was going on. Now, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't mean that it has not been backbreaking. It's been a lot of work for all of us, but, uh, you know, we feel that the results will be worth it. What are your expectations heading into the event? Well, you know, that has evolved also over time. I mean, again, it is kind of a... Um, a new type of um, venture for for PTA, you know, like what are we actually doing being involved in this? But the reaction has been, over time, has been growing and been getting very, very positive. So I know that just about a month ago, we finally made a big push to get, um, so one of the the unique things which we're doing is we're not only allowing the general public and and our students to come and attend the event, but we are also allowing them to uh, get a table. So the kids have the opportunity to get a table and have that experience of being a creator who's trying to sell their uh, pieces uh, to the public. So we thought we would only get, you know, 10, 15 table requests. We have over 50 table requests. And the, we have about 125, 130 tables total. So that's a really good mix of both professional creators and kids who, you know, I've been reading through their comments, like they have to fill out a form, say what they want to do, and to hear them talk about like, you know, oh, I want to start my own comic book line, this is the way I'm going to do it, and and I've been doing all these this jewelry, and I really want to present it to the people. Their enthusiasm is infectious now, so I'm hoping that word of mouth and spreading that around, getting the community, uh, in, you know, we're going to be doing a big... Uh, um, press push and you know with the help of you folks and all that we hope to really get the visibility so if we could get you know uh, a pie in the sky a thousand visitors per day that would be fantastic if we get 500 300 that would be still really really good um, so yeah we're hoping for really decent turnout where is the event going to be again it's at the high school so it's 56th street uh, between 2nd and 3rd avenue um, and it's we're taking over like about Three floors, we're doing the auditorium, the gym, cafeteria, another theater space, and classrooms. It's gonna be, it's gonna be um, quite busy the day before as we set up. We're gonna, we're gonna be bringing in all these tables mm-hmm. and all that, yeah, and food. It's gonna be a big turnover from going from school uh, yes. set up to that's right, you know, Comic Con uh, <laughs> style <laughs> set up. And then we have like about three hours Sunday night to, you know make it turn the pumpkin or turn the, <laughs> the coach back into a pumpkin, you know? So yeah, cause that Monday school starts up again. So we promised the school that we'll, you know, leave everything back to the way it was, but yeah, it's going to be a big conversion uh, of it. It's not, you know, the school, again, being an art and design school, it's, um, it's used to doing these kind of, these type of events for, for themselves. I mean, we, uh, because again, we have a lot of kids majoring in photography and illustration tuning at animation, architecture, fashion, and and graphic de- 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 like design. Um, there we do have a lot of shows that mm-hmm. occur. We have an actual. We actually have a gallery that's open to the public every day about there. So so the school's used to having people coming in and, and seeing things. Whatever. We're just taking it up, you know, an extra notch. You know. Do you expect a lot of alumni to? Like, do they know about it? Are they coming back? Like, yeah. Is there? Yes, actually, we. I, we're. I'm very happy that the uh, alumni, uh, especially in uh, working with the alumni association, they've been very helpful, and we've been making uh, connections with uh, 
alumni not only just simply interested in seeing uh, the history of the school is that it's uh, it's in a new building. The building's only six years old, seven year, a year a years old. So a lot of alumni haven't seen the new building. So this is a nice way, like a twofer, and kind of mm -hmm. get to come in and join them to see these new the facilities. Um, the school's 80 years, 82 years old, I think, uh, this year. So it's it's been around a long, long, long time. Um, but yeah, we've been reaching out to alumni, and some alumni are actually going to be showing. They're, they've actually rented out tables. Um, and then some alumni are just simply going to come and hang out and, and see what's going on. So I'm, I'm very happy with the alumni like outreach. Mm -hmm. And have you been to other cons? You know, I'm one of those one of those guys, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of old, but uh, I've been to cons years and years ago. I haven't been following them recently, uh, in like the last decade or so. I tend to be more of a PAX person. I uh -huh. kind of go to video game conventions or board game conventions. I, I, I do those, but not Comic Cons uh, specifically. Um, but I do know what it's, you know, mm -hmm. going to PAX and those. I mean, you know what it's like, you know, the, the hub, the whole crazy hub of, of the tables and everyone kind of jockey for your attention and all that. So, so I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that energy. What kind of memories do you have at PAX? Oh my gosh, it's so, I mean, that's my trip out to Seattle and also to Boston. And it, the thing about these conventions is that if you do it enough, it stops being uh, so much about the conventions, but more about friendships. You know, mm -hmm. you go out there to hang out with folks who you met and you keep going out there to connect with, uh, with folks that, 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 that you've met. So it becomes, you know, yeah, you'll still stand in line for three hours for some, <laughs> for some new video game or something or whatever it is. And, uh, and, and wait in line to get into a panel about something really interesting. But really the, the fun stuff to me now is to hang out afterwards and we'll get, get, get some drinks or get some get a nice meal with some friends in the industry or just simply other friends who share the same interests. Uh, I think that's what, I think that's where we're taking over this whole pop culture. You know, us geeks, we've found mm -hmm. our, our, our home. Mm -hmm. There's a strong community, as you're saying, there's a strong community around people that go to events like that. And do you feel that the, there'll be a strong community growing from fanfare? I, I'm, I'm banking on it. I want it to be something where we can start, um, if we can really make this a, a fun, positive experience, um, my, my mission is to try to keep that going. Because then it just means that the next time around it won't be as difficult. It will attract more more eyes, and it'll you know listen. At the, the bottom line is that we're trying to generate funds for the school. You know, we we serve um, we have a, a student body of 1,400 students. Um, many of them are uh, underserved. They're you know they're not economically uh, doing this so well. Some are. We actually have quite a few which are homeless or in foster homes. So we see the challenges there. We have these kids who are so talented. But yet, you know, they're taking photography. They have to buy a three hundred dollar camera. You know how? You know that's if they're going to fashion, they have to buy a fashion kit. If they're in um, just in general, if they're going into art, they have to buy an art kit. So we're trying to help ease that. So that's what fanfare is all about: to generate funds to help offset that, and uh, you know, pay for uniforms, club events. We did college trips for the first time this um, this past year. Um, and some kids have never never stepped out of the city. So when we took them up to SUNY, some of the SUNY schools upstate, they were like, I never even visited a, camp, a campus that's more, you know, gr uh, grass and trees than it is concrete, you know? And and that to me, that, that I'm very happy to see that because then these kids get a taste to see, look, this is the this is your chance. This is your opportunity. You know, you don't have to just think in terms of staying here, staying local, or whatever. You can, you know, if you got the talent, man, push it. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, that's one of the reasons why Seth Network wanted to get involved, because at the end of the day, and it's so funny too. The website says this is not your normal con, <laughs> right. and I'm like, that's the first thing that hits you as soon as you go to the website. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then really, you know, going further, talking to Surrey, and um, it's amazing, you know, especially someone from an education background, like a little, my little experience teaching and the arts and everything. I realized that um, the arts gets cut first. That's Anytime right. there's any kind of programming, right. the arts gets cut 
first. Absolutely. And there's a whole bunch of children that have a lot of ideas, a lot of creativity, and they don't have the tools right. to um, to further that. So this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm. That's all. That's what it's all about. You know, like. I mean, if I if I can reveal my past, I'm a I'm a Bronx science kid, right? So I'm like, and, and I got and and the story is that oh, like, you're smart. Uh, yeah, I'm one of those <laughs> I'm one of smart <laughs> academic guys. Although I'm not, I mean, yeah, but not really. I mean, whatever. You know, I got like a 75 average in the school. Don't don't tell my mom that. But um, but no, it was you know I went to Bronx science and uh um and then. You know my career i got into computers and so on and so forth and then my oldest son went to bronx science and so i got to get reimmersed at the bronx into high school I'm like wow this is really great and listen they got it going you know it's established there you know you got when you got doctors and lawyers and all you know the the they got money coming in and i'm happy for them i mean that's great those kids need it and that's what that's what you know and all of them a, a science Stuyvesant. Brooklyn Tech, all those schools, they're doing so so good for the, our smart kids. Um, and then my, own, my my youngest son went to art art and design, and that's where my wife went. So there's this whole like weird <laughs> one of us, one of our kids went to our school, and one of right, us went right. to her school. Just, it's funny, right? But but then when I went there, I'm like, okay, so let's see what's going on. And then it's like it's very different. Like just like you're saying, man, it's right. like arts. You know, I mean. Teachers there, the staff there, they're fantastic. They, you know, they want to give the kids everything that, that that they can. But when you look at the bigger picture, it's it's rough. And and, and especially when you th you know you can get very meta about it and think about well, you know, if you're academically gifted, mm. there's a definite track for you. You know, mm. the schools are all for that. They want academically gifted. If you're artistically gifted, like you're saying, you know, music, arts. All those things get shoved aside. Like that's not what's important. Everyone wants you to be a uh, you know high high percentage college graduating school. Test test test. And there's nothing really wrong with that. But then what about those kids who that's not that's mm -hmm. not where they fit in. That's not their thing. You know they're more about creative uh, stuff. And then you look at what we have now in our culture again. And in, in this in this our geeks taking over the world. Pop culture is so popular you know this you know talk you know zombies movies superheroes you know uh, a geek fashion uh whatever it is you know come video games board games all these things and so it's like hey maybe we can kind of tap that you know and that's where when sorry said let's do this i was like oh absolutely mm -hmm. you know we have to we have to make take a shot at it see what happens so and yeah if at the end we can help fund, you know, college trips and all that. Then it's it's all worth. Then we're we're kind of chipping away then at that sort of that imbalance and mm -hmm. and hopefully help some of these uh, some of these kids out. Comic book movies were just a bust like a long time ago, yeah. up until probably two thousand. Up until the Avengers, and even a little bit before that, like two thousand seven, two thousand six. That's kind of when comic book movies started being right. like, okay, now yeah. they're coming out more than right. Come 2011, 2012. What, it's like, when did Blade come out? Because Blade oh, really yeah, that's Blade, that's right. yeah. doesn't get the props that's that right. it's supposed to. <laughs> right, but right, Blade right. really set the trend. Right. In fact, I didn't notice it that in the credits they don't even mention Marvel <laughs> in the original. But when they when they re-release, I think the DVD. Right. Then they, put they finally Marvel. had to put him in. Right. Yeah, Marvel they, didn't have they, any clout that back then. They were probably able to like, oh. you know, we, it was probably one of those things where like. Can we get our name in there? No. <laughs> Sorry, we, who are you? You know. Wow. Because you know they were back then. They were owned by that guy or the guy from Revlon, Ron Ron whatever his oh, name is. Wow. So it was like it was nowhere the way it is now, where it's like this, you know, this monolith, this entity. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're. I mean, you're absolutely right. That's that kind of you know scrounging itself. I mean, think of like that first Fantastic Four. B movie. It was just. I mean, that was like. Yeah. Where could we find that? I mean, I've seen. I've seen stills, right. and I right. saw one or two clips, and I heard it's like, you know, what they say like Catwoman's really bad. Yeah. Um, oh my God, that's awesome. Sorry, <laughs> Howard. <laughs> right. We right. won't forget. Um, you said you said yes to the money on the script. Sorry. Right. Um, but they said that the that Fantastic Four is like. 
if not the worst, yeah. like number two, the worst right. ever made. I mean, I think I've seen like some clips of the effects, like how just, <laughs> you know, oh, the stretching of the arm and everyone looked just, you cringe, you know, but that was, but I remember the buzz back then was like, maybe they're going to, you know, the, us, us comic book nerds are like, maybe they'll be able to make it work, you know, and it right. just shows you how desperate we were to see that. So, so then when, like, you know, Blade is the first glimmer and then you have like Iron Man, I guess, is when the thing's like really like, oh, wait a minute, we can, fire, yeah, yeah it, this yeah. can really work, it could really happen. So, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I guess we're, we're ignoring all the Supermans from way, way, way back when. You know? <laughs> yeah. That was a, well, that there were different... that many bad Supermans. I mean, <laughs> not really. Right. I mean, right. no one wants to talk about Man of Steel as if it never happened. Right, right. Which is right. so sad. I feel so bad for the actor. Yeah, Brandon. But no, not, now he's got his <laughs> no. new career on, uh, on TV, right? In, uh... He plays uh, one of the, oh, now I'm going to blank out. But he's actually an actor. One of the, um, am, I, am I thinking of the other actor? Oh, geez. Cut this part out. Yeah, there you go. I like Perfect Steel. example. Perfect example. Yeah, no, Cause, cause, it just cause, slips through. Because if it worked out for him, <laughs> right. he would have been like household name, right. Superman. I mean, there's like two huge, uh, I guess you could say three huge gigs. I guess you could kind of throw Spider-Man, but pretty much. Batman and Superman, whoever plays those characters, you right. become automatically a household name, right. whether you're right. into this stuff or not. Right. Yeah. yeah. Christian Bale's Batman was good. The voice, when he was attacking people, oh. it wasn't necessary. It could be changed. It wasn't necessary. <laughs> but overall, those movies were good. Yeah. And then going back to Man of Steel for one second, yeah. I, I'm in the minority of people that <laughs> like that movie. Like, all my friends think oh, that yeah. I'm crazy for liking it, but right. I, I liked the action of it. Because it didn't shy away. It wasn't like uh, the the old movies or even a little bit to an extent of the comic books where right. Superman doesn't, you know, impact, doesn't hurt a building. Like, building where I like that buildings and the environment were mm -hmm. actually affected as opposed to, um, say, Superman th throws uh, Zod, like, straight down <laughs> this narrow alley and doesn't touch right. anything. Right. Right. right, right, right. That was something right. that I liked about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Collateral damage. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the realism in the comics realism. now. Everything's the, raw and real. Billions of dollars of damage. Do you do you feel that um, by doing this event, you are inspiring? I know it, it, it sounds kind of corny, but it might be it might be real for you, and it might be really happening. Do you think you will inspire the next Neil Adams? The next? I listen. By by doing this? that's part of the that's part of the um, part of the frust not frustration but it's like this like oh because we have like I said we have events where the kids show off their stuff you see what some of these kids are doing you know but they don't it's not you know the parents come and maybe some folks see I mean, I said, some of these kids are just amazing amazing artists not and not just in comics but in photography and graphic design and architecture. I mean, if I can, the the school itself does a good job of advertising the fact that they get lots of scholarships for these kids. The the the, the, the school student the school encourages these students to enter scholarship um, contests. If you're in, if you're a parent, and if you're involved in in this kind of stuff, there's a book that gets put out every year. The uh, uh, the uh, directory of high schools. It's this big like telephone book. Of, you know, and someone has to get published every year, and there's a contest to design the cover for it. Art and design kids have been winning that contest wow. for years, like it's and con consistently they just beat everyone else. So we're talking about every other high school you know, that, that wants to, end, or maybe it's any other school. I don't think that they limit it to high schools. Um, and it's pretty pretty wild and then there's uh we have a video department that's run by this really fabulous teacher mr harkle and he encourages his kids to enter into these competitions and video you know i mean listen i'm here in this video studio. video has this very <laughs> has this really interesting um among the geek culture video has this very interesting cachet it's very up there you know it's very like you know this is really uh a serious important stuff so you make you make a good uh psa you know, and it resonates, and that's like, this is it, man, they want. So 
a lot of our kids are winning like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, uh, twenty-five thousand dollar scholarships um, based on the work that they do in this in in the, and their video entries for these contests. You know, uh, that might be aggregated by by the way. It might be like you know a couple of kids are getting thousand, three thousand, whatever. But I know that they'll say you know collectively the, the kids have won you know many thousands of dollars worth of scholarships. So so I think. This is another, maybe another way of saying, of seeing this is that yes, this will shine a light on some of these kids and and what they're doing and and and, for, and, and well well earned. You know, they have been doing some really great things. Um, uh, and will it? You know, I think maybe corollary to your question is, will this inspire maybe other art schools, other schools? Uh, that's kind of what we've been doing. We've been telling other uh, high schools, you know. This is not just for our kids. It's open to the public, and we're giving a discount to any student who wants to come um, to 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 engage. So we're trying to let the, anyone and everyone say, you know, you want to come, you want to, you know, hobnob with these um, creators and these these people in the industry and get some tips and advice and look at your portfolio and and, and see if there's any you know networking cap possibilities and so on. Um, this is this is it. I well, this are. is great. Well, I would say you're not um, not only inspiring the kids, but hopefully through this program and people coming out will inspire people to financially support. Because it's, it's awesome what you're doing. Thank you so much for taking your time to come out and speak with us and share with the world what you're doing. And we're going to be there. It's um, we put up the flyer again. I know you said you have a new flyer as well, but yeah, it's uh, February 24th and the 25th. Is there a website people could check yeah, out? Yes, it's uh, it's it's in there near the bottom, but very small. That's the other change we made in the, on the flyer. Make that make that website more prominent. But yes, it's uh, it's it's kind of a weird URL. It's a uh, fanfare is for dot me. So it's an F A N F A I R E is for dot me. And, awesome. kind of, uh, and one of your kids do that too? Uh, no, that's actually we, again part of uh, one of our parents that did that. So well, very cool. As always, thank you, Michael. The night thing. Yeah. And yes, Miguel Chavez, thank you so much for taking the time, expressing, letting us know. Ladies and gentlemen, please check out and support Fanfare. Seth Network will be there live, and um, we will uh, keep talking about it because it's important. And um, you're watching Eclectica, everything sci fi, fantasy. Geek Media. I am Michael Seven Michael, and we will see you next time. Thank you.